So now that we've seen what vector projection is, we've seen dot products, normalization, a whole slew of math, let me show you how to combine all of that to actually project one vector onto another to know how much of one vector is going along the other. Let me just draw a vector here we will call A and we'll draw another vector here called B and their length can be whatever they want, it doesn't matter, this could be 1, 1000, 10, 15.2, it doesn't really matter. All right, and then let's draw the famous equation we've been using over and over and over again. In fact, let me use proper colors and bear with me because I think colors will help here. A dot B like so is equal to the magnitude of A, magnitude of A, length of A, we've talked about that, times the length or magnitude of B. Okay, again, the magnitude is simply the length, not a direction. We've seen that. Times the cosine of the angle between them, which we will do in green. Cosine theta, that's probably the most colorful equation you'll ever see. And here's theta. It's the amount of sweep between these two vectors. And I want to know what part of A uh, projects onto B. If I, or another way of saying it is, is what part of A is going along B. Now I know I've drawn B uh, parallel to the x-axis. If we had a xy coordinate system here, B is on the x-axis. But we'll see that we can have vectors. That's not a very good vector. We can have vectors pointed any arbitrary direction and we can cast their shadow on each other. And, and that's the case we're going for, and the case I'm about to show you actually covers that, but I think for simplicity, it actually helps to just start out here with them kind of set up like so. So let's, let's, uh, let's cast our light rays down. These are light rays coming down from the sun. All right, and if we cast these light rays down, we would see the shadow of A would go along B like this, and we call that the projection of A onto B. And then this part right here, you can call it what you like, but I actually heard a term, I don't think it's mainstream, but I've, I've heard this called the rejection vector. I actually like that. And there's always this 90 degree angle there. Now we have our nice triangle. And so using this formula up top here, we, we can calculate, well, how much of A is running along B? And let's do that. If you recall, Sokotoa sine is opposite over hypotenuse. Cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse. Tangent is opposite over adjacent. And we know the dot product gives us the cosine, so I'm not really worried about the sine part, nor am I worried about the tangent part. I'm only worried about the cosine part because that's what I have to work with here. So let's pick apart this part of so Sokotoa a little bit deeper. Cosine. What this means is cosine, that's what the C means, cosine of theta is equal to adjacent over hypotenuse. All right, if I had a triangle that looked like this, let me label the sides here. This will be our hypotenuse because this is theta, and here's our 90 degree angle, and so this will be the adjacent side, this will be the opposite side, so when I say cosine theta, that will give me the ratio of the length of this side over the hypotenuse. Well, I want to know the length of this side. So using this equation right here, how can I find the length of A? All right, let me first circle what, what we do know. Say, say we know the hypotenuse. All right, we know the hypotenuse. And oh, by the way, we know the cosine of theta. Okay, let's just say I knew that. Well, again, if I multiply both sides by the hypotenuse, what I'll be left with is the hypotenuse times the cosine of theta, right, that is h cosine theta, that will give me the length of the adjacent side, and that's what I'm trying to find, the length of this side. Well, guess what? This triangle looks a lot like this triangle, doesn't it? And I'm trying to find the length of this shadowed vector down here. How much of vector A is running along B. What's the, what's the shadow here? Well, let me again circle what we know. We know the hypotenuse. Okay, we know the magnitude of A. We know the hypotenuse, the magnitude of A. We know the cosine 
here, or at least we can get the cosine using this dot product formula. And so that will give me the length of A, or the length of the shadow. Okay, as far as this triangle is concerned, these two triangles are the same, so let me just, I'll say A is right here. Okay, and then here's our hypotenuse. Okay, the same as this hypotenuse. Here is our opposite side that we are ignoring. So when I say hypotenuse, let me draw a better H there. When I say hypotenuse, you can think magnitude of A. Well, the magnitude of A is right here. All right, when I say cosine theta, you can say cosine theta. Okay, this, this magnitude of A, that is our H, and the cosine theta is just cosine theta. So all I need to do, really, is eliminate this B. Okay, if I can eliminate the magnitude of this B vector here, if I can turn it into a 1, then that will leave me with magnitude of A. Let's do the colors again. Magnitude of A times the cosine of theta, which is exactly what we want. Magnitude of A times cosine theta. Magnitude of A times the cosine of this theta will give me the length of the shadow vector. Okay, not, not, it won't give me the vector, it'll just give me the magnitude or the length of that vector. If I actually want a vector at that point, what I need to do with B is normalize it. Okay, we'll, we'll say this is unit length 1. Okay, so I've scaled B down to unit length 1, and then times it by this result. Okay, so I hope, I hope that makes sense. It seems pretty jumbled up. In the next video, I'm going to do a few examples. I think we'll clear the mud. But when you hear dot product, you can think two things. One, either cosine of the angle between the vectors, which is true, or two, you're projecting one vector onto another. If you can get those two things in your head when talking about the dot product, I'm either projecting one vector onto another, or I'm just trying to figure out the cosine of the angle between them, then, then you're good. But next video, let's work out some examples, try to clear off the screen a little bit, and, and turn this mud into hopefully crystal clear water.